Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High and Christ Bless. It's Captain Shafal. This is another 15 minutes with your captain. And today we're asking the question, are you making yourself a living sacrifice? All right, because you come into this truth now, there's always something required. The Lord always requires something from us. All right, so let's start in the book of Philippians 3 and verse 7. Book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. So the things that gained to us in this world before we came into the truth, here it's saying those um, the things that are gained unto me, those things count I loss for Christ. All right, read on. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. So we have to ask ourselves, are we doing that? Are we counting all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ? For this truth. Are you willing to give everything up for this truth? Go ahead. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. So are you willing to give everything up for this truth, for Christ, for these commandments' sake, for the kingdom's sake? Are you willing to make sacrifices, and are you willing to give everything up for this truth? Romans um, 12 and verse 1. So this um, 15 minutes is for brothers and sisters that are in congregations. Well, brothers and sisters, you may be just joining congregations, all right? There's something required of you. You're not here just to sit and ride the wave. You're here to do something. The Lord is going to require things from you. All right, read that. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see that it's our reasonable service to make sacrifices for this truth, to count everything for a loss, for the excellency of Christ Jesus. All right. From there, go to Luke 17 and verse 20. So the question is, are we making ourselves a living sacrifice? Are you willing to give things up for this truth, to put your brick in? All right, go ahead. The book of Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. It says the kingdom of God comes not with observation. I mean, you can't just sit on your behinds and expect the kingdom to come just like so. Go ahead. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. You see that the kingdom of God is within you. The power is within you. Meaning what? You have to do things. You have to bring forth fruits. You have to put things in place. To bring forth the kingdom. All right. From there, go to Ezekiel 11 and verse 16. So we have to make ourselves a living sacrifices. The kingdom is within us. All right. Your works, the, thing, the things that you're willing to sacrifice. All right. Go ahead. Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse 16. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries. Because we've been scattered throughout the four corners of this earth. Israel is going to wake up in every single country. Why? Because we're scattered in every single country. Go ahead. Yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. So wherever we're scattered, there's going to be sanctuaries raising up. There's going to be sanctuaries, places where brothers and sisters can go and, and learn about this truth. All right. So you may be in a country where you're on your own. It's going to take you making sacrifice to bring forth this um, prophecy. Brothers and sisters, you may be in um, congregations for years in sanctuaries already set up. But are you making yourself a living sacrifice? Are you doing things to, to maintain the sanctuary even? Are you putting in works? Um, from there, go to Jeremiah 29 and verse 28. So something is required of all of us. All right. Now that we come into this knowledge of who we are, um, you got to make sacrifices. You got to count everything a loss for the excellency of this truth. Go ahead. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 28. For therefore he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, This captivity is long. So we don't know how long we're going to be here. We know that these are the last days. We can see prophecy being fulfilled. We can see all the prophecies that Christ was talking about. What the prophets were talking about, we can see them coming forth today. Read it again. For therefore he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, This captivity is long. Uh -huh. Build ye houses. He says, Build ye houses. Meaning what? You have to do something. We know that the end is coming, but we still have to put in work. 
It said here in, the, in this captivity in Babylon, the, the prophet was telling the people to build houses. Go ahead. And dwell in them mm -hmm. and plant gardens uh -huh. and eat the fruit of them. Okay. So that's us coming together, working together to build. All right. And you have to make sacrifices in order to do that. From there, go to Haggai 1 and verse 1. So always in the Bible, there's, um, there's examples. The Most High has given us examples of our forefathers. We have to learn and read from our forefathers. All right, go ahead. Book of Haggai, chapter 1 and verse 1. In the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, go ahead. governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. So don't be like um, what we're reading here. Don't be saying within your heart, The time is not, now is not the time to build. I could just sit in the congregation and just relax and try and ride the wave. That can't be your mindset. Go ahead. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lie waste? The Lord's house lie waste while everything, you're continuing. You ain't making no sacrifices for this truth. Your, your lifestyle outside of the congregation is fine. Everything's running fine. But meanwhile, your, your sanctuary is lacking things. It, need, it means that you need to be putting forth work. You can't just be sitting and, and riding this wave. Go ahead. Verse 5. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. It's now time for us to consider our ways. Are we just more, conf um, more focused on our lifestyle, the things that we have in this world, or now we willing to make sacrifices for this truth, to put in works? All right, so from there, uh, read five again. Verse five. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. You may be called into this truth, but it's not here, you're not here just to ride the wave. Matthew um, 22 and verse 15. We can't say within our, in, within our hearts, it's not time for the Lord's house to be built. Remember, the kingdom of heaven is within you. That means that you have to do things. You have to put forth. Go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 15. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how uh, they might... 14, 14. Verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. You see that Christ says many are called, but it's only a chosen few. So you have to ask yourself, are you part of that chosen few? Or are you just one of them brothers and sisters that are called? Because it's a narrow path into the kingdom. Many are called, few are chosen. All right. From there, go to um, John 6 and verse 64. So the question is always going to be, when you're, you're walking this truth, are you making sacrifices for this truth? Are you counting everything a loss? Go ahead. Book of John chapter 6 and verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. Mm -hmm. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. You see that because many are called, but few are going to be chosen. Go ahead. And he said, therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Go ahead. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? And who, thou hast the words of eternal life. So where are you going to go? You understand that the words of eternal life is right here. You've been, you're being given the words of eternal life. When you go to your sanctuaries, when you go to your different schools, when you log on to um, your, your Zooms and your YouTubes and so on and so forth, you'll be given the word of God. Go ahead. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, uh -huh. the son of the living God. Jesus answered them, have not I chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil. Okay, where you at? Verse 70. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right, hold that. Um, go to Matthew uh, 21 and verse 28. Book of Matthew chapter 21 and verse 28. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, 
son, go work today in my vineyard. So this, this man had two sons and he said to the first son, he said, go work in my vineyard. Go ahead. He answered and said, I will not. So this son said, he ain't going. He's not going to go and do the work. Go ahead. But afterward, he repented. So afterward, he thought, about, thought on himself and he repented and he went and done the work. Go ahead. And went. And he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And went not. And this son now, he said, I'm going to go. But he didn't do. That's like some of us in the congregation. You got to ask yourself, which of these two sons are you falling into? Are you falling into the son? Um, if you're in the category of the son that said that uh, he ain't going to do the work, you're sitting there in the congregations for years and you haven't been putting in the work. Now you're meditating on it. Now you repent. And now you start putting in the work. You start making sacrifices for this truth. That's the brother. Is that the brother that you are? The second brother is what? Read the second one again. Verse 29. Verse 30. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And went not. Are you the second one? You say that you're going to do the work. You're going to put in the work. You're going to make sacrifices. And you don't do anything. You just sit there. You just think that you're going to ride the wave. Go ahead. Whether of the twain did the will of his father. Read um, 30 again. And he said, and he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. So this son said he's going to go, but didn't do. Go ahead. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. So which one of the two did the will of the father? Go ahead. They say unto him, the first, uh -huh. Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Uh, where you at? Verse 31. Uh, Why? Because they repented. The publicans and the harlots, they repented. Fought on those, their ways, repented. The kingdom's there for you. Do you understand? The, the scribes, Pharisees, the leaders... They talked a good one, but what? Their works, their deeds were wicked. All right. So from there, go to um, 1 Timothy 5 and verse 8. So which of the twain of the sons are you? All right. It's always about us self-examining ourselves to see how we're walking. Are we walking in the righteousness of our forefathers or in the sins of our forefathers? Go ahead. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You see what Christ is saying? If we can't provide for our own, we're the nation of Israel. We're coming back as the nation of Israel, meaning that we should be able to provide for one another, make sacrifices for each other. All right. Christ said, if you can't do that, you're worse than an infidel. All right. From there, go to 1 Maccabees 3 and verse 43. 1 Maccabees is in the Apocrypha. 1 uh, Maccabees 3 and verse 43. Book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3 and verse 43. Mm -hmm. They said one to another, Let us restore the decayed estate of our people, and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Uh, read it one more time again. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people. So the, the mindset of our, of our forefathers was to restore the dis, decayed estate of our people. All right. That should be your mindset. That comes with you making sacrifices. Go ahead. And let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Fight for our people and the sanctuary. All right. So from there, go to Sharok uh, 24 and verse 34. Shot 24, 34. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 24 and verse 34. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only. You see that the mindset is not just to labor for yourself only. Go ahead. But for all them that seek wisdom. But for our brothers and sisters that are still trapped in Christianity, Muslim, atheists, um, you name it, seven-day Adventists. All these false religions, our, our job now is to make sacrifices for those brothers and sisters, making sure that we're, we're building sanctuaries throughout the four corners of the earth. 
All right, so from there, go to Matthew 9 and verse 37. Book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 37. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. You see that the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Many are called, few are chosen. Go ahead. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. You see that? That's what we're supposed to do. Pray for more laborers. All right, brothers and sisters, to repent, keep God's commandments, be willing to make sacrifices for this truth. All right, um, 2 Chronicles 15 and verse 7. So always consider, consider, think on your ways. All right, that's required of all of us now that we're in this truth. We're not here just to ride the wave, all right? Go ahead. The book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 15 and verse 7. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak. Be ye strong, let not your hands be weak. Go ahead. For your work shall be rewarded. You make sacrifices for this truth. You put in your brick, your work's going to be rewarded, all right? From there, Hebrews 6 and verse 10. Make sacrifices don't let your hands be weak, all right? Put forth Hebrews 6 and verse 10. Book of Hebrews, chapter 6 and verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Read it one more time. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. You see that the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your works and your labor of love for this truth. The sacrifices that you're making. Count everything a loss. Go ahead. Which ye have showed towards his name. In that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. So brothers and sisters, we have to make ourselves living sacrifices for this truth. All right. The kingdom of heaven is within you, but you must put forth works. All right, that's another 15 minutes with your captain. I'm Captain Shafar. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. Strong in the Lord!